In which war did you serve? During the Korean conflict. Thank you. And what was your branch of service? Uh, the U.S. Army. Okay. And your highest rank? Corporal. All right. And in what general locations did you serve, starting with your um, training? I got drafted. Mm -hmm. I first went up uh, to Fort Devens first mm -hmm. for orientation. Got on a bus and they drove us to Fort Dix, New Jersey. Okay. And that's where uh, I uh, took my basic training with uh, most, most of the uh, guys that were there were from New York, New Jersey. Okay. And uh, I had my basic training there. All right. And after Fort Dix, where did you go? When I finished my basic training, we uh, some guys went to Germany, mm -hmm. some guys went to I think uh, Japan. They would just sort of just pick and tug you where where you were going. Mm -hmm. I ended up getting picked go, to go to uh, Korea. Okay. I got a, on a train in Fort Dix, New Jersey, mm -hmm. and took it. And for five days, it took to to get to. California, San Francisco. I uh, got there and got off the train and got on to a troop ship that was in San Francisco Bay. And we left San Francisco Bay and was on the, it took us two weeks mm -hmm. to get to uh, Japan where I, I just stayed for overnight. Then got on a sh ship again and went over to Korea and la landed, I can remember it, w it was in December when we got off, when I got off the boat, it was snowing. <laughs> they put us on a train that had no windows, it was snowing. Mm -hmm. It was cold and took us up to our, our unit where uh, we were stationed. And where was that? That was up, Korea was in two parts. At the time that I went over, the war had just, it was just stationary mm -hmm. between the north and the south, the 30, 38th parallel was what cut it in half. Mm -hmm. That's where I was. Okay. Before that, the war was moving from south to the north, back to the north to the south mm -hmm. with the fighting. But if, as the war kept going on, they eventually just stopped at the 38th parallel line. Mm -hmm. And they were on their side, the Chinese and the mm -hmm. North Koreans, and we were on the south side. Okay. And that's where I spent all my time. All right, and then after after um, after you were in that area, then where did you go? That's where I spent all my time. All time, and then after that, you came back to the United States to. Yeah. I I came back uh, to California. Okay. And then took a train, and went back to Fort Dix. Okay, very good. And Thank stayed you. there for about maybe two months, and then. Uh, was discharged. Excellent. Okay. And we'll come back to that again. Okay. All right. Um, were, you, were you drafted or did you enlist? I was invited by the President of the United States <laughs> to join. <laughs> did you get a letter? Oh, yes. I <laughs> addressed got to you personally? Oh, yeah. Addressed to me personally. <laughs> and I'm and, um, curious, uh, where were you living at the time? I was living with my mom and dad in Wethersfield, Connecticut. In Wethersfield. Okay. And how did you how did you feel when you got that letter? Did you expect it? I really didn't even know that there was a war going on at the time because I was only nineteen. As far as service wise, I didn't know what the service was about. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't even know where where Korea was, so everything was was new to me. Wow. 
how did you, um, do you recall the date that you got your, your letter? Uh, no. It mm -hmm. should, it should not, I'm mistaken, it should be on my okay. discharge. Well, we can look that it up. It was back in 52, I know that. Oh, okay, that's, that's good. Um, well, it sounds like it came as a surprise, or? Oh, yeah, it came, mm -hmm. it came through the mail and everything. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you, I'm just curious. Did you have friends who in the in Hartford, Weathersfield, who were also getting their letters? I had a couple of buddies get it after I got in over Korea. In fact, I had one one buddy from Weathersfield who was a friend. We used to hang around. He got uh, he got drafted, but uh, he got stationed in Japan as an MP. And on my way back from Korea, we stopped in Japan and I was able, he was able to get out and come up and pick me up at, I, I forget what the name, I think whatever the camp was. And he took me around Tokyo and oh. parts of Japan and showed me okay. uh, for a couple of days. Uh, we saw each other and then, and then, and then uh, I departed and he, but he spent all his time over in Tokyo okay. as an MP okay. and lived in a hotel. Mm -hmm. oh. So he, he had it made. <laughs> it did, sounds like it. Um, how did you happen to pick the branch of service you joined? That's what I was assigned to when I got uh, 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 put in the service. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um, tell me, uh, can you tell me about your first days in the service? While I was at Fort Dix, mm -hmm. or what? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. They treated you like you were. Uh, of course, being only nineteen, they scared the hell out of you. Mm -hmm. Especially the sergeants who was in charge of of, of the barracks. Uh, they made you feel like you were nothing. Ooh, okay. They treated you like that, mm -hmm. and, and that's the way the service. Yep. That's the way the service is, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and they would most of the time was training how to shoot a rifle, how to clean a rifle. Uh, they they would harass you, wake you up two three o'clock in the morning, and make you go out and stand at attention in front of the barracks, or or. Uh, have you clean the barracks at five, six o'clock in the morning? Mm. Or uh, sometimes you'd have to pull KP. Nobody mm -hmm. wanted to get on the pots and pans because <laughs> they were huge and or peeled potatoes mm -hmm. and stuff like that. That mm -hmm. that's part of, of what basic training. Basic training was you learned how to uh, operate a rifle, how to throw a grenade and mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Hmm. Um, do, um, do you remember any of your instructors from that time, from boot camp? Uh, not really. I, got, I, I can picture my sergeant. Mm -hmm. uh, he was halfway decent. He mm -hmm. wouldn't treat you like uh, you were nothing. Okay. Uh, the lieutenants were, were, were sort of uh, uh, arrogant. But that's what they, 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 I don't know what they were trying to prove to you. Uh, mm. Being, not knowing what's going on and being only 19, it was hard mm -hmm. to adapt to what was going on. Right, right. How long were you at Fort Dix? I think, I think basic training went about eight weeks. About eight weeks? Okay. Yeah. And you mentioned before that, I would just go back a minute, that you were, went to Fort Devon? That's where they first started you out at Fort Devon. It's like interrogation, okay. like when you first start. Oh, okay. And you went up there. I remember they put us on a bus. Mm -hmm. We went down the Mass Pike. <laughs> and at that time, I uh, got off the Mass Pike into Connecticut. And I don't know if you've ever been to Wethersfield mm -hmm. on the Silas Dean Highway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's where I lived in Wethersfield. And I lived on Knott Street. Oh, yeah. And I went right by my house, mm -hmm. heading towards Fort Dix. 
you want to feel sorry for yourself and you see your house and you're on a bus with a bunch of guys. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll remember that. You, that is memorable. It, it, if you go along the side of the Highway, you'll see Knott Street. I know Knott Street, yeah. You, mm -hmm. you go right up the hill. I looked right on the top of the hill oh. and the bus went, drove right by. At that time, I don't think 91 was around, and I, I forget how they went, but they went right down the side of the highway, right down, right by my house. Oh, and if you'd had a cell phone in those days, you could have called yeah. your family and yeah. say, oh, yeah. okay, coming by. Mm. Well, you know, my mother and father came from the old country. That's where they were born. That's where they lived most of their lives. And then they both came here to the United States and they settled in Hartford, and then eventually they got married uh, in Hartford. So, you know, being from the old country, they, they didn't know mm -hmm. things were different over in Greece than they, than they were here, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, my father was in the First World War. Okay. Uh, so, my father, my mother, father really didn't know what was going on. Um, the only thing that bothered me was that when I came back, and at that time everything was on train, I took the train from Fort Dix with a bunch of other guys, and some guys got off at Greenwich, some guys got off at Stanford, and so on. And when I got to the Union Station down here at Hartford, I expected to see my mother and father mm -hmm. and my grandmother and when I got off the train the only one that was there was my aunt. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I uh it made me feel like they didn't know what was really my mother mm -hmm. used to write me all the time. In fact I, I got a whole stack of letters mm -hmm. that I have from her that that she kept and gave to me when I came home. Oh, that is good. Now, for your for your boot camp, yeah. I mean that's that's a that's a heartfelt moment driving by your own uh, street, yeah. going okay. from Fort Devon to Fort Dix. Did you have any other other memorable experiences during your boot camp, during your training times? No, Anything it was just in? one thing. This is the thing that I that they used to have harass you. Uh, they used to make you pull guard duty. Mm -hmm. And I remember doing guard duty once. With, it was just a shack. Mm -hmm. And I had to keep walking around with the rifle on my shoulder for two hours. You'd go on two hours on, two hours off. And it was nothing in the shack. All <laughs> you would do was just walk around with the rifle on your shoulder. And you were sort of supposed to be guarding it, I guess. But you would pull two hours at a time two hours off, and do it all night. Wow, so two hours for you, two hours for some Somebody another soldier, else, then... Yeah. And then it came time for me, they wanted uh, to know if you, uh, you had to do uh, in the swimming pool, and I didn't know how to swim. Oh. And you had better know how to do it, or else you were going to do it, whether you went under or not. And uh, I did it, I went from one end to the other, back and forth, and I just kept my hands going, 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 and I did it. Wow. We even had a pool at, at our house. I used to never, I hated, I hate water, and I hated swimming. Good thing you didn't get in the Navy, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but you had to finish the course. You had to be able to swim, swim the length of the pool, well, and you whether did you went it. under or not. Yeah, and you did it. I did it. I just kept going. I never stopped. Did you ever feel, wow, I did it? You know, did you ever feel a sense of accomplishment about the things that you... I'm a type of person that once I start something, I like to finish it. Yeah, yeah, good. It's just like I, when I had a stress test. Oh, I don't know, well, how, how many years ago? And you know how you get on and you keep walking, mm -hmm. and they give you so much time, and he said, well, your time is up. I just can I continue? I want to see how far I can go. And I did. Mm -hmm. And I kept going until I couldn't move my legs anymore. That's the way I've always been in my life, mm -hmm. that when I start something, I want to finish it. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so from, now we're going to take you um, from Fort Dix yeah. 
And what happened after Fort Dix? Where did you, how did you get from Fort Dix to the next place? From Fort Dix, I went to California. Okay. We were put on the train. Okay. For five days. And I think it was San Francisco is where, where, where we, uh, no, I went up to Seattle, Washington and spent a month up there. A month, wow. I think through the whole month up there, it rained every day. It didn't <laughs> stop raining till the day we left to go down to California to get onto the transport ship to, take, to go overseas. And what did you do in Seattle for uh, rainy, one rainy month? <laughs> we just hung around the barracks. Really? That's all we did. did and you walk do... the hill. Seattle is all hills. Yeah. And walk the hills. And they had a, um, what do they call it? CYO, uh, not CYO, uh, for, for the USO? veterans. USO? Huh? USO. 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 Okay. All right. Yeah, that's what we used to do. Uh, in Seattle, did you continue any training, like with no, your rifles no, or anything? No, just stayed in the barracks. Okay, so was, and going up and down those hills. Going up and down and doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all they had it for us to do. Wow. And then from Seattle, you took a train to? Down, down to San Francisco, mm -hmm. and we got on a transport ship, and I remember we were all standing outside looking as we're leaving the bay, and we went and somebody says, there's the Golden Gate Bridge. Oh. And so we went under, and I remember all the guys saying, hey, Scott, this is great. I said, ah. Well, once we got out of the bay and out into the ocean, and the boat started going up and down, well, I, I say a few few guys started oh. hoofing all over the place. <laughs> it really got bad. Ooh. And uh, we had the only thing we had uh, we do we would hang around, and we slept below. Uh, there was in hammocks. It was five mm. high. You'd have to, if you were on the top, you'd have to climb up to get to the top. And we spent two weeks on the ocean. Ooh. You, do you remember the name of the transport ship? I've got it. I think I have it on a card in there. Okay. All There's right. a, isn't there something about if you go by some line or something? I forget what they call it. Meridian. Yeah, is that, is that, that's what it is, oh, yeah. Oh, right, right, yeah. right, across the international It was, it was a line. USS something, I have the card there. Okay, excellent. And so, I'm just curious, on the ship for two weeks, what do you do? Just hang around. Yeah, any, play any Oh, they games, would have movies cards, for us at night time, on, on, uh, uh, outside. And then, I don't know, if you've ever been on the ship and you're on the ocean, and they had a screen up, up above, and, it would, and the, you know, the ship would go up <laughs> and down. I don't know if you ever watched a movie like that, but that's what we did. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, so when you reached, um, when you uh, disembarked from the ship, yeah. where were you then? Where? We landed in Japan. In Japan. Okay. And I was sicker than a dog. I had to either, I, whatever I had, I had a fever, I hurt all over and everything. And after we got off the, off, off the ship, uh, they assigned us to, to, to some barracks and they wanted me to go to the dispensary and they were gonna keep me in there. And I didn't wanna leave the guys mm -hmm. that I had been with basic training and everything. And I said, no. And the next morning I got up and uh, got another ship to take from Japan over to Korea. Okay. Well, that was a, that was a good decision in the end, I, I'm going to guess, that I, I staying wanted, with your... I wanted to be with my buddies because yeah. I, I took my basic training and I've got it in my speech that, that, that I've done. Mm -hmm. Most of the guys that I took my basic training were from New York and New Jersey. Mm -hmm. I owe my life to a couple of the guys. Mm -hmm. They were with me when I was over there, and they were, we were together when we were fighting. Mm -hmm. And there are guys that will watch your back, that, that were behind you. What we had a say, we had a saying in the army: "You watch my back, and I'll watch your back." Mm -hmm. 
And these guys, there's nothing from New Jersey and New York. Are, I don't know if you ever met people from New York and New Jersey, but they're very dedicated yeah. people, and the guys were the same way. Good. And that's who I was with, mostly with with, with guys from there. Mm -hmm. And I would, I have my life to thank for them. Mm -hmm. Good decision. Um, when you, um, after you left Japan and arrived um, by ship uh, in Korea, do you remember right. where you landed in Korea? I think it was Incheon. Incheon, okay. And like I say, at that time, the war what had. It didn't stop. It was just that the 30th parallel line was the breaking point. They stayed there, and we stayed that down the south. Mm -hmm. They stayed the north, and the 38th parallel line. It was just like a. It was a trench. Mm -hmm. It went from one end of Korea to the other. In fact, anything over in Korea where the mountains were was all trenches. Wow. Most of the fighting was done in trenches. Hmm. When when you arrived at Incheon, what was your impression of where you landed? <laughs> I wasn't very happy because it was in the middle of December and there was a snowstorm, like I say. And we got off the ship and they put us on this Korean, I think it was a Korean, it had to be a Korean train, one of these locomotives. And the cars, the windows were broken. Ooh. It was the middle of December. It was snowing like heck. Fortunately, we had parkers and everything, and we took the train to wherever we were going to be uh, assigned to. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Well, it's a good thing you had some of the warm, the warm clothing. It was about the coldest place on earth. Is that right? That's really? right. Yeah, mm -hmm. for you. Well, it's almost up where Alaska and all, all, all of that is. Yeah, it's cold. That's Hot right. in the summer, cold in the winter. And you were there. To yeah. experience that, all. yeah, right. So uh, when you went on the Korean train, yeah, um, in the snow, where did you? Where did they take you? They took us up to to where we were going to be assigned, to which was up at, at the thirty eighth parallel line. All right. And how long were you there? I think I was up on line for over a year and two months. I spent up there. Wow. And while you were there, did you have, did you have a barracks? Did you, where no. did you stay and sleep? And I lived in what they call a bunker. A bunker? Which is made out of sandbags. And they make, they make like a house, oh. like a, a square thing. And okay. they put pile sandbags. And on the roof, they'll, they'll, they'll put maybe three or four layers of sandbags in case shells or rounds or more rounds come in and they would hit the top of it, it wouldn't make 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 it collapse. In fact, I got pictures of the bunker. Oh, good. Okay. And yeah. about how many soldiers would be in a bunker? It'd be seven or eight. Okay. And we lived uh, in there and uh, with the rats. There was rats in there. Oh. We, used to, we used to, at night time, they used to come out and I remember I got a care package from my uh, mother, mm -hmm. and she sent me some Hershey, Hershey's. And I had put it underneath my, my cot, and I, it was in the middle of the night, and I heard this noise. And I, anyways, I, I, I lit up the candle, and sure enough, there was a rat eat, eating the Hershey's. Mm -hmm. So what we used to do, the rats used to run back and forth on top of the ceiling, mm -hmm. and we used to get it with our, with our carbines or whatever we had, and we used to shoot through that. <laughs> mm, I bet that made a oh, good yeah. sound. We did, we done some, well, it was 19, you did some crazy things. Yeah, yeah, it sounds it's like. It's one that we didn't shoot ourselves up. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, what, in that area, what was, the, what was a typical day like for you? Uh, most of the time when you're in combat, Mm -hmm. They don't have you do anything. You just hang around. They want you ready in case something happens and you got to get out of there and they need you right mm -hmm. away. Okay. So you should just 
hang around the bunker and uh, we just used to pull, like I told you, uh, where I was, was all mountains and it was all trenches and at night time we used to pull guard duty and uh, uh, we used to do that but during the day we used to sleep and mm -hmm. what it was, like I said, it was the 38th parallel but there was like no, what we call no man's land, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And that's where all the fighting, they, we used to, uh, they used to send patrols out at night time, and we did. Mm -hmm. That's where I had my first episode, that's where I picked up that, uh, where, when I got wounded, it was uh, on my first patrol, mm -hmm. when I got there. So you did see a lot of combat. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I wasn't more there than, more than whatever it was, two or three days. Mm -hmm. uh, I was told that night that I was going to go out on patrol. There was 35 of us. Uh, this lieutenant had charge. It was his last patrol and he was going to rotate home. And so we all lined up and we would go out in the line behind each other. And we had what you call a point man which would lead mm -hmm. and you'd go out you'd go out between no man's land and we went out and we sort of set up in a circle around this hill and we were out there maybe three or four hours and then all of a sudden rifle fire went off and mortar rounds started going off and everybody got up and you couldn't see nothing. They were up on top of the hill. They were waiting for us. They waited mm -hmm. until we had set up and they started rolling grenades down and mortar rounds and it was dark. We couldn't see them. Mm -hmm. All you could do is with your rifle is just start shooting. And when I had gone out, they put a, a radio on my back. Mm -hmm. I, I says, what's this for? I never had a had anything to do with radio, it's a backpack. You don't worry about it, you just carry it out there for us. Well anyways, when I went to get up, the handle of the phone, I was near a tree, had wound around it as I got up. And I looked to the right, and I don't know whether they were Korean or Chinaman, they were coming after me and I'm trying to get to go and I can't go because the radio is on my back and this thing is wound around a branch so I got the thing and I just took it and just threw it off and made it back through my, my line, uh, back to the American lines because everybody else took off because we didn't know where the hell they were and uh, when I got back, the guys that were on the main line there said, did you just come through that field over there? I says, yeah. You're lucky you're alive. I says, why? He says, it's all loaded up with mines. We got mines out there. Well, I didn't hit any of them. But of the 35 guys that went out there, only 50, 15 of us made it back. And the next morning, we had to go down and identify the guys that had gotten that had gotten killed in what, I don't know if you want me to say this on camera, when they rolled back the canvas of each guy, what they had done to make sure that they were dead, they bayoneted each one of them in the forehead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was my first look at seeing mm -hmm. guys that had gotten, you know, killed in it. Right. But that's what that's what war was about. That was my first thing. The guys used to, said when we went out, "Oh, it's quiet up here. Nothing ever happens. We never have any any firefights or nothing." It must have been, and that lieutenant that was supposed to go home, he got killed. He got killed. It was his last. It was his last one, mm. and he never made it home. Oh no! But that's that's what war is about. If if that little bullet or that little round or that shell got your name on it. Mm -hmm. There's many times that, that 
different things that happened over me over there that uh, I probably shouldn't even be here. It's well, all luck. You were there. Did you say a, a year and two months? You yeah. were over yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what what camp what campaigns or, or battles were you in over there? The ones I was in, Old Baldy and Pork Chop were in the no man's land in uh, by the okay. thirtieth parallel line. Those are the two battles I was in. Was that the one you've just described, or was that one of your that, first? That that was my first episode first. of combat. Okay. Oh. Uh, Old Baldy was on the hill trying to keep the hill. They were fighting, both sides were fighting the, who could get the best hills, the highest, because it was getting close to the armistice that they wanted to sign over there. Okay. And they all wanted to get the best positions around. So that's where all these battles came in. The second battle was pork chop. Uh, Do you remember what time of year that was? That was right near the end of the war. Okay. They wanted Port Trump because it was a high hill. Okay. Okay. Uh, if you see the uh, movie, it explains uh, 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 a lot about what went on, was how it was fought and everything. Most of it was mm -hmm. fought in, in that's all, uh, it was trenches. It was the, all Korea was all trenches. Mm -hmm. That's all it was. Once the war wasn't moving, it was staying in one place. Right. There would, uh, like I told you, there was one trench that went from one end of Korea to the other. You could walk right through the trench from there. Were you in the same bunker the whole time, or did you move from place to place? No, I stayed at the whole time. Is this the same bunker the whole time? Yeah. Wow. Became yeah. became like home. Yeah. yeah. That was my home. Are there any special um, memories of um, those two campaigns, like Old Baldy and Port Chop Hill? No, I, the company that I went up with on Port Chop Hill, Port Chop Hill was a fight for who could take it. Okay. We would take it, they'd come back, but they would all overwhelm us. We really didn't want to get involved with it, so okay. our commanders weren't sending any help. There was only about maybe a company of us. Okay. In the company, I think there was 135 guys. Do you remember what company? No. Okay, go ahead. But 135 they would guys. run us off, mm -hmm. we would regroup, we would, and we would try to retake it again. Mm. We finally ended up taking it. The company I was in, there was 135 guys only 25 guys made it back. We lost all the rest of the other guys. Wow. Was put, a lot of it was politics. Of, because yeah. the generals and everything didn't want to send any help. And the movie tells you about that too. Mm -hmm. At the time, were you aware of the politics or the, the no. difficulties no. with... Just, just trying to stay alive. Right, right with reinforcements, yeah. 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 Um, during that time, during... All, all that was going on, did you sustain any injuries? No. You didn't? Okay. okay. The only injury I got was when I first got over there. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, I still got the shrapnel in there. They, 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 never, they, they never took it out. And that, that happened when? When I first got there. When you first got there? Yeah, yeah in, in, in uh, 52. And was that, uh, that during those first days? Yeah, I wasn't there more than three or four days. Three or four days, really? Because the, guy, the guys kept telling me, the guys that had been there for I don't know how long, Jesus, you're lucky, it's nice and quiet up here, <laughs> we hardly, hardly have any. But each night, each side, the Korean, North Koreans and us would go out to no man's land and they would send patrols out there. Mm -hmm. So now and then they would have a skirmish, uh, you know, mm -hmm. trying to uh, right. get the bed. And that night, they ambushed us out that they're waiting for us. Right. And I just happened to hit the wrong night. Did, uh, did the shrap where did the shrapnel come from? I have no idea. I, was, I, was, I stood up, mm -hmm. and the next thing, an explosion went off, and I felt something stinging mm -hmm. on the side of me. And uh, 
I don't know whether it was a grenade, a mortar round, or what. Did you have to be taken off the hill then, or could they fix you up right there? They, I, they fixed me up uh, right there. Okay. And then... And <laughs> went out again. You went. Wow. Mm. That's the way... It, we got... For the Battle of a Pork Chop, it got so bad that we didn't have enough guys that they were grabbing clerks, cooks, anybody that was around in the rear and bring, giving them a rifle and telling mm. them to go up there. Wow. That's the way. They don't care. Wow. Mm. It's, that, that's what, what war is about. Survival. When you saw these reinforcements who were green coming in, how did you, how did you feel? By then you were... I was just worried about myself and the yeah. guys that we were with. Yeah. I had one guy from New York when I first got, after I got over there a while. I was walking someplace, I forget, and I see this guy walking towards me. And it was one of the guys that I had taken the basic training with and went overseas. He was from New York. And we got good friends. And as he came walking up to me, He had a haircut. You know the tomahawk haircuts <laughs> that they get? He had a tomahawk haircut. He had all kinds of guns on him. He had bandoliers, this and that. And I says, what are you supposed to be? He says, man, what were you? He, he, he wasn't black. He, he was I love it over here. I says, what do you mean you love it over here? He says, I can't wait to go out on patrols. I love going out. Nothing bothers me. I go after anybody that I see. He loved to kill people. That's the I'll tell you one thing. I never thought about dying over there. Death, mm -hmm. I never thought of through all the time I never worried about am I gonna be of course you had to live every day not knowing whether you were going to be alive or dead. But at, at that age, I never worried about, am I going to make it till tomorrow? Mm -hmm. I didn't think about it till maybe 20, 30 years that I'm lucky to be alive and the different things that happened that, that it didn't happen. I was in, uh, in this Jeep, we were going along this dirt road, and all of a sudden a round goes off right in the middle of the road, right where we went by. Now, if we were a second sooner or a second later, it would have en en exploded right in, in the middle of the jeep. That's, it was all, that's, that's war. You're lucky, you're lucky. If, if you're not lucky, that's it. So when you would be called to leave the bunker and go out on night patrol or you would have to be in a battle, you just went. You, you better go. You just, yeah, yeah. That's what, that that's just that's the way they that's the way they train you. And After a while, you, mm -hmm. you like I say, I, I I to this day, I I never thought about when I went out that I, that I was going to die. Mm -hmm. Funny thing, mm -hmm. and that's the way this kid was. Right. We used to have we were on the thirtieth parallel. The Ethiopians oh. were next to us, okay. and the Chinese used to hit. <laughs> They used to never bother them because when they used to go on patrol out there, they'd go out there and after they, they would kill somebody, they would take their hair and cut it and put it on their bunker and hang it outside. The, the, the Chinese and the Koreans were scared of them because they used to come after them with knives. So did you have any contact with the Ethiopian soldiers? Just, 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 just to stay high. That's yeah, just to say hi. They were there a little ways down the road from us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. 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 And good stories from them, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. They were good fighters. They, they, yeah. they, they were scared of them. That's why they never bothered them. They, they, would, they would come <laughs> after and chase after them and get them. And as a reward, they would take their hair. <laughs> well... Um, um, when you were wounded, were you awarded any medals or citations? Just a purple heart. Just a, pur just a purple heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then the two bronze stars for participating 
in the battle for pork chop and, and, and old ball. So you had one for each, uh, one for old Baldy and oh, one for yeah. Well, one what it is with the bronze star, yeah. every time you're in a major battle, you you, you get a star. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to tell me about being in that part of Korea or your your days there? Um. Uh, It wasn't. It wouldn't be. A, maybe now you would like it. It's uh, uh, almost as good a country as Japan. You know, with the. Uh, it's almost like New York. Seoul is. Mm -hmm. uh, the people. They would come in and and rob from us. Oh yeah, they didn't care. Uh, we used to get uh, these Korean kids. They used to come in and uh, we used to have them clean up and wash our clothes. Mm -hmm. They used to take the clothes down to uh, down to the stream and give it to what we call the mama sons that were down there with the paddles, and they and, and they would wash the clothes and he would fold them and everything. Uh, and we and we would uh, give them uh, money mm -hmm. for that. Uh, were they uh, happy because we were there, or did they appreciate it? Mm -hmm. I I don't think any country appreciates us what we do for them. Mm -hmm. I'm not that that, that I'm uh, against it. But we've lost a lot of a lot of guys for what, uh, and never got anything. Not that we wanted something out of it, mm -hmm. but they went and gave their lives up for what, mm -hmm. and we never got appreciated for it. Mm -hmm. And it was the same thing. That's why they call the Vietnam War. Uh, uh, I forget. They they called the Korean War the Forgotten War. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew about it. Uh, the Vietnam veterans got spit on when they came home. Mm -hmm. Nobody didn't like 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 them for what they did. They thought they were a bunch of thugs that were over there. Mm -hmm. uh, I just don't don't understand why this country wants to take care of other people because they they they, they don't don't appreciate it. Right. Right. Knowing that all these young kids mm -hmm. and everything that didn't. Finish their lives out. Mm -hmm. Right, right. I understand. Um, just going to um, ask some questions about um, life while you were in the service. Things like, how did you stay in touch with your family? By uh, I got a bunch of letters over there. Mm -hmm. I would write to my mother, and uh, this is about that's that stack. Oh God. There's not much much I could tell her. I, in fact, if, if you read the letters, maybe it was two pages, if it was that. I said, Ma, everything's all right, doing good. I said, never tell her anything what was going on. And uh, uh, most of the letters say the same thing over and over again. And and she saved every one of them. Oh, that's dear. Yeah. Were, were you aware, was there censorship? Uh, the ones that I got there, no. No, nothing dripped off. No. Could you could you say we are at such and such a place, or could you? No, I never said it. I used to, I used to never say that. Oh, no, okay. I used to tell her everything is fine. Oh. Uh, there's not much going on. Just hanging around. I I, I, ne I never told her anything. You never wrote about your battles or the no. things. No. Oh, really? No. Oh, what a good My story. kids don't even know. My kids never asked me. Hmm. That still bothers me. Not that I would tell them everything. Right. But. Yeah. Uh, uh, even when I came back to Wethersfield and I saw some of my buddies and then they said, well, where have you been? We haven't seen you around. That's how much they missed. Wow. See, not everybody got drafted. Right, right. At the time. Right. 
So when you were over there, um, what was the what was the food like? What did you eat? How did you get food? Sea rations. Sea rations. Hmm. I haven't got one. I, 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 it's around here now, but I don't know what it is. I still got my. I still got my dog tags. Oh my goodness! Ah. There was a little uh, can opener, about that big. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> and meatballs and spaghetti were my favorite. And that's funny. Now and then they used to set up a tent behind the mountains to where uh, if motor rounds came in, it wouldn't, it, and they used to give us now and then a hot, hot, a hot meal. But, that, but most of the time it was uh, sea rations, crackers, and candy bars, and Sea rat, they were about that big, and you had that little opener, and you open up. Sometimes you, you, you could heat it up, other times you would have the cold. Did you, did they bring in a supply of these sea rations, or? Yeah, and they would dish them out to you. And dish them on a daily basis? It's yeah. Like breakfast, lunch, yeah. dinner? And this is my dog tag. Oh, okay. okay. And, I, and I still remember my serial number. You had better remember your serial number. Ah, right. Mm -hmm. If not, that was the first thing at basic training. You better know what. Mine was US 5118000. Good, very good. That's what I mean about my memory. Yeah. I, 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 you can I, I, remember. Yeah, that I remember. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, did you feel that you had enough supplies when you were up there by the 40th, 38th parallel? Did you have enough ammunition? Ah, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We we had enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. but like I say, it was all stationary, and 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 uh, except for going out at nighttime for for for, for patrols, mm -hmm. it was worse before I got there in 1950, when they went all the way up to the Yalu, almost up to, in, in, into China. Mm -hmm. Them guys mm -hmm. went through more than what we did. Right, right. So if you needed ammunition or grenades, oh, oh yeah, oh, oh, yeah. That oh yeah. Was right yeah, there. yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, did you did you feel a lot of pressure and stress while you were there? No, mm. I. That's mm -hmm. honest. I I don't really understand. Uh, huh. uh, not that things didn't bother me, but I never thought that much, uh, like I say, uh, there was times like before we were going to go to Pork Chop Hill, we were all sitting down there waiting and you could tell guys that were uptight, they would just sit there and just stare and not say anything. Whether they were scared, I, 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 can't, I can't tell you that. Uh, you done a lot of smoking. Of course, they gave us free free cigarettes. Were you a smoker? I was, and when I came back, I think two or three years later, I uh, I stopped. Mm. Uh, the last time I got drunk was over there. We were in a in a shack, about four or five of us. I don't know where they got the guys got the booze. But they had beer and whiskey, and I, I'm not a drinker, and we started drinking, and I started drinking beer and whiskey. Well, after a while, things started getting a little dizzy, and I said to them, I'll see you. I'm going back. So I went back, and, and, and I got into the bunker and laid down, and things started going round. The next thing I remember, I got up, mm -hmm. out of the cot, mm -hmm. and crawled outside and got sick. That was the last of me drinking. drinking. Smart. Yes. <laughs> While you were there, did you, did you carry anything for good luck, like a rabbit's foot or a medal or...? Uh, I think my mother gave me something. Mm -hmm. uh, from the Greek church or something, it was like a or something uh, that I had 
that I used to keep them with. But that, but that, but that was about it. Mm -hmm. Well, it helped. <laughs> yeah, it, here I am. Yes. No. Um, how did how did you all entertain yourselves? You know, particularly like during the day, or did you play games? Well, I just yeah, now and then, mm -hmm. just just hanging around, you know, like guys when they get together talking mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, did you see any USO shows? Yes. Uh, who was there? Marilyn Monroe came and Bob Hope. Really? So yeah. you got to see them? Yeah, I think I... I had a bunch of pictures and I think I had taken it. I can't remember whether, whether I got put up. But I remember Marilyn Mar Mar Monroe and Bob Hope were there. What? So did they come up to the trenches? No. Or adult. Mm -hmm. We had to go back, sort of in the rear. Okay. Oh. And they had a stage set up for them. Yeah. They would truck us back, and uh, yeah. we would all gather around there, okay. and, 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 and they p would put on their show. Wow. People would say you saw two of the top uh, performers, yeah. entertainers. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Did you have an opportunity to go on leave? They let us go for, I was just, just going to mention that to you. Oh, okay. uh, I don't know how long I was over there, maybe six months, seven months. They call what they call R and R, rest and recuperation. Mm -hmm. They used to call it. it. Was the first time that I flew while I was in the army. They flew us from mm -hmm. Korea to Japan, Osaka. Mm -hmm. In fact, I got a card on, on the mm -hmm. table. I'll show you. It was a nightclub. Uh, they gave us uniforms, and we walked off the base. Of course, there was kids out there. GI, hey GI, come on. Number one, number one, and uh, oh, I don't know, eight or nine of us uh, went went with this couple of kids to this club that he took us to in Osaka, and uh, we stayed there for a week. Mm -hmm. um, did you where did you do any touristy things while you were in Osaka? Were there things? To no, see? Uh, usually we. Uh, stayed at the hotel, mm -hmm. and at nighttime we would go down to the nightclubs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, we had girls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if I should say this on, on the video. Can you cut things? Mm -hmm. uh, we went to the nightclub, and they made us all sit down, and they were brought out uh, eight, ten girls, and you would say, well, which one do you want? And you would point, and you would. She be. It cost you. I think it was uh, sixty dollars for the week. For that mm -hmm. was for eats and and the girl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. But yeah. uh, but they were all uh, checked by the government. Right. Right. So. Right. So we, you had the one leave. That's all I got. You had yeah. the one leave. Well, sounds like you. Made the best of it. Oh, yeah. It. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you were 19, you were going back to a, a war again. Yeah. And, and, and so, so that week, you, 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 you lived it up. Right, right. Um, while you were in the service, do you remember any humorous or unusual events? Like, did you, did soldiers, did you play jokes on each other or pranks or? Uh... No, not really. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the guys kept to kept to kept to themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, especially after after the war ended, mm -hmm. uh, most of the guys, uh, all they wanted to do was get home. Right. Right. So. When when you were in Korea, what what were the dates that you were there? Were you there after the peace treaty was signed? Yeah. Okay. All right. I was there from fifty two to fifty four, and they signed the peace treaty. I think it was in fifty four. I remember that night when we were waiting to see if anything was going to start. In fact, uh, we spent the night in a foxhole, and it was raining. I remember that. <laughs> And we're waiting for to hear artillery or something go off, and uh, it was quiet that whole night. 
and, and we knew the next day that the, it's never, it, the wars are still, still officially on. It was never an armistice sign. The war is basically, there's still a war on over in Korea. It, it's not fighting, but it was never, uh, there was never an armistice signed on it. So, because there wasn't an armistice, were you, were you still in combat mode? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, uh, to yeah, the oh, very, oh, to the there day you There still is. There still is, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, okay. They're still up on, a, on, 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 the, on the hill by the 38th parallel. Okay. They patrolled it and everything. They don't, they don't go out, but they stay out right on their side. Mm -hmm. And they stay on their side. But an armistice mm -hmm. was, was, was never signed. So that war can start up just like that. That's why you hear the North Koreans, well, we're going to do this, and we're going to do that, and then that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what, um, while you were there, what did you think of your officers and your fellow servicemen? Basically, the guys that I was with, I loved. Mm -hmm. Because they were, the, they, they, they were the ones that I had to count on, mm -hmm. and they counted on me. Uh, I don't know. It it it, it was. Uh, it 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 made me realize uh, what life is about. I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you keep a journal while you were there? Up in my head. In your head. Right. That's good. That's good. You really don't want to remember things. Mm. You you remember the good parts in there was good parts and there was bad parts. Mm -hmm. Basic training was was in the they made you feel like you were two cents. Mm -hmm. Like you were you're nothing. They used to keep telling you. You're nothing. I own you. You belong to me. Mm -hmm. They would pump that into your head. Mm -hmm. Whether that was part of the strategy to make you uh, feel that way or what mm -hmm. uh, some officers really didn't want to have they were trained I guess their job was to tell you what to do mm -hmm. it wasn't a job to be your friend mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's why they never they used to the officers would stick with themselves, anything that they had, they were there, and we were over them, over there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, were you still were you healthy the whole time you were over there in Korea? Did you get sick or? I don't. Totally Other than the truth, no <laughs> I can remember during the winter when we used to have roll call, going out in the middle of winter with just a t-shirt on, and I really never got just just, just the one time. On my way over, mm -hmm. I got sick, but other than that, mm -hmm. no, not really. Good, good. Or the other, other time was when we were in that shack. Right, right. Now, how, where were you, um, how did you find out that the war had ended for you, that you were leaving Korea? How did you find out? I was in the tent, at, at, no, I was in the bunker, and the sergeant came in and he says, Anthony, I says, yeah. He says, pack your stuff in the duffel bag and be ready to, to leave tomorrow. You're leaving for home. The next day they came and they put us in a truck and they drove us down to uh, to, to where we were going to go from where we were going to leave. That was the happiest day of my life. Did you expect it at that time? Were you were you waiting? I knew for I was it? close mm -hmm. in points, mm -hmm. but I I did. But they had started when the war had, they started to sign the armistice, that they were, they were sending guys home and they would have a list. And uh, I had an idea that uh, I was getting close to going home. Oh, it must have been a great day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sweet words. And then there I was again two weeks on the ocean. Again. Oh, no. <laughs> Although we went differently this time. We went from Korea to Japan to, okay, we stopped at Okinawa. For, for to pick up some guys there. But it was more eventful going back home. Because you were going back home? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So you went from Korea 
to Okinawa wow. and then by ship to California. Mm -hmm. Do you remember where? Uh, same place same? at uh, was San Francisco. Yeah. The Bay, and then got on a train and went uh, and took the train back and went. Uh, I tell you, it, it was. I used to laugh when the train used to stop. It used to have to stop. Some of the guys used to run off to try to find some place that sold, sold beer. They wanted to mm -hmm, It used mm -hmm. to make me laugh. You, you'd see a bunch of guys running out and then try to make it back in time before the train pulled out. <laughs> Anybody get left behind? I don't know. <laughs> Jesus. So the train, where did the train take you then? From Back to Fort Dix. Back to Fort Dix. Yeah, I started at Fort Dix and ended at Fort Dix. Wow, and then when you were at Fort Dix, what happened there? How long were you there? Maybe a couple of months. They had us doing crazy stuff. Like they had us uh, walk around the area picking up cigarette butts off the ground just to give, to, to give us something to do. And then, and then a couple of times we went down south and picked up a couple of guys. Mm -hmm. And then finally, uh, in fact, I, I got out before the 24 months. And that's why I got out early. So when you talk, talked about um, picking up the guys, you were picking up um, prisoners or? These were guys okay. that went AWOL okay. and them type of guys. Okay. okay. And then bring them back to, to Fort to, Dix? To, to Fort Dix, yeah. Okay. Oh, that was an interesting assignment. Oh, well, we had, if they, if, he, if they ever got away from us, we didn't have to serve their time. Oh yeah. Ooh, ooh. All right. That's what that's what we were told. So you were very attentive. That's why we had handcuffs. We keep them handcuffed, and we had a forty-five. Mm -hmm. At the time. Did you have any incidents? During, no, this that? guy just the guy just sat there, and that was it. Yeah. Okay. I think it took us a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, when uh, when you left Fort Dix. How did you leave Fort Dix to come home? We took the train mm -hmm. uh, wherever in New Jersey, uh, wherever the train station was, maybe about 10 of us, mm -hmm. all from Connecticut, all uh, and most of them were from Stanford, Greenwich, New Haven, and such on. And we would stop and they would get off mm -hmm. and we, we would say goodbye to them. Okay. All right. I think I, I think I was the last one oh. uh, on the Union Station, which is on in Hartford, and uh, that's when I when my aunt was the only one that was there to to, to greet me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That bothered, that still bothers me. I I know my mother and father meant well, but it would mean so much to have people there to see you come back. Right. 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 Um, what did you do in the days and the weeks after, after your after you came home? I went back to work. Mm -hmm. I uh, at the time I got drafted, I worked at the Royal. I don't know if you remember Royal Typewriter. They used to make typewriters, mm -hmm. and if you got drafted, your your job was still there. So I went and. Uh, Went back there and worked there for a while. Mm -hmm. um, did you? So you went back to work, yeah. and did you take advantage of the GI Bill or? No, I never okay. did. All right. No. I, I. Sounds like you had a good job at Royal Typewriter. That I stayed at Royal Typewriter maybe five six years, and then I got in the truck business, driving a trailer truck. Okay. I don't know if you remember. This goes way back to. You remember First National Supermarkets? Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's who I used to work for. Oh, and I used to uh, uh, drive a trailer mm -hmm. and uh, deliver groceries for them. Mm -hmm. And I stayed there for maybe eight years. And then my wife decided to get into the printing business. So she started a little printing business. And eventually I quit First National and went in in with the printing business for maybe printed and it helped her maybe four or five years and then the business started 
getting slow. Mm -hmm. So I finally had to go out and get another job. So I saw this job for Gerber Scientific. They were looking for a van driver. And that's where I've been 23 years, and I'm still there. Wow. That's admirable. <laughs> yep. Still working. Oh. While you were in the service, did you make any close friendships? There's one fellow that I've been trying, and I kicked myself in the butt. Raymond DePatra is his name. He was from Bristol. <laughs> and we went through basic training, and we went over to Korea. At the same time, we went to the same unit. And the last time I saw him, he had got gotten wounded and I don't know if he made it or not in fact I still have his address and there is a Raymond de Patra still in Bristol whether it's him or his brother or, or what but he was he was about the only uh, real friend you know mm -hmm. that I from around mm -hmm. that I that I piled around I often wonder I know he got hit, and, mm -hmm. and, and they took him, and then, then I lost track of him. Mm -hmm. And then when I got back, and we started this thing with this uh, th thing we're doing on the computer, I had mentioned to them that I knew this kid Raymond DePatra from Bristol. And we looked it up, and there is a Raymond DePatra still living in Bristol. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I hope to go out there and see, see if it is him. He'd yeah. have to be the same age I am, up in his 80s. Mm -hmm. did, um, did you, have you attended any reunions? No, not really. No? Okay. Nothing, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. Once we left, that was the end of it. That was it? Yeah. yeah. Um, did you join any veterans organizations? I am now with the uh, Patriotic Commission mm -hmm. in South Windsor. Mm -hmm. uh, we do different things for veterans and stuff. Uh, when I went down to Washington D.C. and saw the Vietnam the, uh, War, I told you uh, I brought up at one of the meetings that I I would like to put a wall up down at at the pool in South Windsor, and me and this other guy was trying to raise funds, and uh, that's about the only thing. There's this guy from East Hartford who uh, runs a Korean association. He keeps calling me to come and join them. And I did a couple of times, and I sort of got turned off because of him. Uh, he's ahead of it, and he, he tries to portray himself that he was over... A, over Korea and all these battles and everything, and come to find out he was never in, he was over there, but he was way in the rear. And every time I, in fact, I just saw him maybe a couple of weeks ago at the parade, come on and join us and everything. Mm -hmm. And I, and that's one reason why I don't uh, uh, join him. Uh, with the Patriotic Commission, I go to these convalescent homes in South Windsor and visit the veterans. Uh, I was just there maybe three weeks ago at the one down near Evergreen. Mm -hmm. I went with this other fellow that asked me to go with him. And we went into the convalescent home and uh, I couldn't figure out why the door was locked when we got there to get into this room. Well, anyways, we got in there and it was, they had set up a table and seven, eight veterans came out and sat down. And uh, they said hi and everything, and we would ask them questions, and they would say, "Well, I, I don't remember." Well, come to find out, all of the veterans that were there have all hired her. They didn't even know we were there. It was so sad to know they would talk. Or one would talk, one kept saying to me, oh, you're a Korean veteran, huh? 
And he would keep saying that to me. And I said, yeah, I'm on. And just one would really talk about his experience, but the others would just sit there and say nothing. And it was so sad to know that they were never going to leave there, and that's where they were going to die. And they didn't even know who we were. So now and then I go with him uh, to a different convalescent home. Uh, sometimes we'll play bingo with them and do stuff like that. But uh, the first one really knocked me out for a loop uh, when, when I saw guys like that. Um, how did your military experience influence your thinking about war or the military in general? Uh, I hate to see young kids going to war. The wars that we've been in, I think we didn't need to be in war. It was all politics. They don't care about the people that, the kids that they send, and most of them are kids. There's, there's older people, the guys that join it, that, that, that want to make a, a service out of it. Uh, a lot of these guys that join the National Guard, the only reason they join the National Guard is so they can get themselves a free education. Well, they found out that when they did join, and the war started in Iraq and, and that, they made a mistake. Um, how did your service and experiences in the military, how did that affect your life? It's affected my life more since my wife died. Mm -hmm. For some reason, these two people, my two friends that I have, John and Caroline, she, I used to Caroline, she's around 44. Of course, I worked with her, and then eventually uh, she got a better job. She works over Cigna. She's been a good friend to me. Of course, a guy 80 years old meets a pretty girl 44 years old. Well, things start happening, but she set me straight. We're just good friends, and when she left Gerber, now she's been gone three years, and we meet once a, once a week. We go out to dinner, just me and her, mm -hmm. and we have something to eat, and that's all there is to it. She's the one that bought me the train. Mm -hmm. She's the one that taught me how to do it. John and her taught me what life's about. Uh, they've helped me feel like I'm a human being, that I, not just like yourself, went to eighth grade, that we're dummies, that mm -hmm. it seems like my brain has changed for some reason. They, they've helped me with so many different things. Uh, uh, we don't get together and do the, thi the things as much. I get mad at them, but uh, I've, I've got to realize they've got a job to do. The time ain't their own, and, and, and I've got a lot of time in that. And uh, she's put something into my life that I, I've never had. I, I probably would be sitting in a chair just doing nothing and looking at TV. In fact, this Saturday, uh, she, I love her mother and father. They live in Rhode Island. And uh, they want me to bring that uh, CD that I got of pork chop. They want to see what it's about. Anyways, we're going down there Saturday, and she's taking me down there. We, I've been down there a couple of times uh, to visit them. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to know about my experience. So these two people have had a big thing on my life. They, I don't know it, whether I would just sit here and rot away, I don't know. That's wonderful. Yeah. I wish you could meet them because they're, they're, they're two good people. They sound like it, yeah.
quite a blessing. Um, Mr. Anthony, is there anything else you would like to add um, that you don't feel has been covered in the interview? Uh, no, I think that I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Okay. I'm going to work until I uh, can't walk. I think it's it's helped me a lot. Uh, I would like to visit at schools and talk to kids about veterans. Uh, the only thing that bothered me was when I was at Rocky Hill. I had one girl that was way in the back. And I said to her, yes. And I don't know, did, did I, I don't know if I can't remember whether I told you or not. She asked me if I had ever killed anybody and what, what war was about. And I told, and she stumped me. I didn't know, I had all these kids looking at me and I didn't know whether I should say something about killing people and stuff to kids. And uh, the answer I came up with was, let's put it this way, I'm still here. I had to do things that I didn't want to do to stay alive. And that's what war is about. War is about killing people. It's either you or the other person that's coming after you. And you have to do what you have to do. And that's the way I left it just as that. That's a good answer. Good answer. You know, kids don't want to hear about, you want to tell them what happens to guys and things that you see. Right. You seldom hear a veteran talk about that. Right. In most of my speeches, I talk about what veterans go through right. and everything. Not, I, 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 when I show you that speech, you'll see what I mean. And just for the record, um, Mr. Anthony does have a good number of documents that he is uh, willing to have us scan for him. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Mr. Anthony, I'd like to thank you so much for your service. Thank you. And for taking the time for us to interview you today. Thank you. Thank you.